For this experiment, a simple exercise was devised based on the internal security problems met by our forces during the Eoka campaign in Cyprus. Seventeen marine volunteers were organized into a troop of two sections with a headquarters element. The troop was given the task of capturing as many terrorists as possible and of locating some stores which had been hidden in defined areas. The exercise was designed to be repeated on each of three days with the same general idea but with differing situations introduced to prevent the action becoming automatic. In order to provide control conditions, the troops were given the same quantity of water to drink before each day's exercise. Unknown to the troops, the drug was added to the water on the second day. The drivers were undrugged. For the sake of safety, the troop were not given any ammunition during the exercise. These opening scenes are being shown to provide a composite picture of the high state of training of the men making up the troop, and also to provide a comparison with their performance on the second day when under the influence of the drug. Notice the wide dispersion of the section, commanded by the sergeant, as it moves across the open country. They move at the double as they advance into the wood, which could be occupied by the enemy. Movements are cautious and alert, continuous observation being maintained. Notice again the general air of watchfulness. and the pause in movement made by a section commander for observation and listening. The sentry is alert and making maximum use of cover. It is emphasized that these scenes were not posed specially. In fact, some of them were taken on the third day of the trial when familiarity with the action might be expected to have taken the edge off the initial enthusiasm of the troop. On the second day of the exercise, the troop commander was told that about half a dozen terrorists were thought to be in his troop area. This map shows the ground, under a square mile in extent, in which the exercise was to take place. The troop commander was told that the terrorists would try to clear the stores which were known to be hidden in this re-entrant. The troop commander's plan was to form a firm base at Beaches. Then, number two section was to move to the southern edge of the re-entrant by way of Redwood. Number one section was to move to the northern end as soon as it was clear that number two section was not being opposed. However, number two section came under fire, first from the brick hut later from Redwood. This, in the event, resulted in number one section being sent to reinforce number two section. The drug was given orally to the men in the hospital ward at 11.15, and they immediately embussed, arriving at the exercise area ten minutes later. They advance in extended line on the beaches where the troop commander planned to form his firm base. During the clearing of the wood, a terrorist is discovered in a thicket and is captured. Some stores are also found. Medical staff and observers wearing civilian clothes accompany the troop throughout the exercise. By 11.35, troop headquarters is established on the southern edge of the beaches. At 11.40, the first effects of the drug make their appearance. Two marines are reported to the troop commander for insubordination, no one realizing that their behavior was due to the first effects of the drug. The drug is also beginning to affect the other men. They no longer take cover, they relax and begin to giggle. At this time, one man is more severely affected than the others, losing all contact with reality, dropping his rifle, and becoming unable to take any further part in the operation.
In fact, he has to be withdrawn from the exercise a few minutes later. Meanwhile, two sections starts to advance to Redwood. The troops have lost their air of urgency, and many men are laughing. They advance over open country and suddenly come under effective fire from the brick hut on their left flank. The umpire rules that two men have been killed by this fire. One of them is the radio operator, who by this time, 11.50, has become incapable of operating his set effectively anyway. His relief reports the incident to troop headquarters, where the level of efficiency of the men, including that of the troop commander, is also dropping. The section commander is informed that the brick hut will be neutralized by the rocket launcher carried in troop headquarters, and that he is to continue the advance as soon as the target is engaged. The movements of the rocket launching team have become slow and uncoordinated and it is apparent that they are now incapable of taking proper aim. At 11.55, two section continues its advance until it again comes under fire from the direction of Redwood. At this point, 45 minutes after administration of the drug, these men, although becoming more and more detached from the reality of their environment, are still capable of effective response to any sudden stimulus. However, their response is for limited periods only, after which they again become indecisive and lethargic in their movements. At the edge of the wood, in the area from which fire has just been brought to bear on them, they are bunching and fail to get under cover quickly. At 12 o'clock, two section again reports the situation and asks for reinforcements. As a result, number one section is dispatched by Land Rover from the beaches to reinforce them from the right flank, which is presumed to be clear of the enemy. Without the stimulus of an immediate objective, the men give way to laughter. Defensive positions are not adopted. However, when the enemy throws a thunder flash into the section, the men are again stimulated into awareness but it is only the radio operator who responds sufficiently to capture the man. The section is still within sight of the beaches, which is only 700 yards away over open country. By five minutes past 12, however, the troops are so disorientated that they are incapable of appreciating this. The sergeant tries to use a map and they start arguing about their position before sending the prisoner back to troop headquarters. Meanwhile, radio communication at the beaches has become difficult, if not impossible. Men with no specific tasks to perform have relapsed into laughter and inconsequential behavior, though they are still capable of sustained physical effort. This man nearly succeeded in felling this tree using only a spade. However, constructive action is still attempted by those retaining their sense of responsibility and having a definite job to do. In Redwood at 12.10, number one section makes contact with number two section. Neither section commander feels himself capable of continuing to command, and each tries to hand over to the other. The link-up having been achieved, in the absence of firm leadership, the men begin to drift aimlessly. Eventually, at 12.20, more by individual decision than by command, 
they decide to return to their firm base at the beaches. While these incidents are taking place, the troop commander is still trying to direct the action in spite of feeling nauseated and being disturbed by the mental effects produced by the drug. In beaches, an enemy walks right through the position undetected, returns and throws a thunder flash. A few men respond sufficiently to capture and search him, but 70 minutes after the administration of the drug, with one man climbing a tree, the troop commander gives up, saying, I cannot do anything about this. I cannot control the men, and I can take no action myself. I am wiped out as an attacking force. The following scenes were taken while the troop waited for transport to take them back to the station hospital for observation. Relieved of trying to maintain command, the troop commander shows the full effects of the drug the main signs of which he has managed to suppress until this time. Organization of the men was made difficult by the fact that reality had become so distorted for some of them that they became unwilling and even afraid to enter the ambulance and other vehicles. However, after much delay, they all arrived safely at the hospital at one o'clock. Two hours later, at three o'clock, the effects of the drug are beginning to wear off. In the hospital ward, some of the men lie on their beds. Most of them are still laughing as they talk about their symptoms and the day's exercise. The sergeant can give routine orders to his men again, although they are still slow to respond to discipline. Yes. Um, all, I want, all I want us to do is to fall in as you would normally, stand by beds in a barrack room. Side by side, anyway, as you would, in a back room, as normal, I just want to... Well, there's only there, cigarettes out. No. <laughs> on your face, huh? Get Scott off his bed. They're upside down. Take that, fuck it, Scott. <laughs> At the same time, the troop commander, although feeling more capable of thinking and acting normally, is, in fact, still experiencing one of the characteristic effects of the drug. Everything he looks at appears to be patterned. While looking at the white ceiling, he describes geometrical patterns which are coloured and three-dimensional. They appear to move in and out of each other. By the following morning, they were all capable of carrying out their normal duties. These final scenes, taken 48 hours after the administration of the drug, show them on the third day's exercise, when all the objectives were achieved in only three hours. <laughs>